In this chapter, we're going to look at topics related to measurement. In this lesson, we're going to look at the volume and capacity of prisms and cylinders. All right, hi everybody. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at volume and the capacity of prisms and cylinders. Okay, so now volume. What's volume? Okay. Volume um, is a measure of the amount of three-dimensional space that an object takes up. Okay. Now, usually, uh, we're needing like length, width, and height, and we multiply those together to get the, the volume of a, of a shape here. However, we're not talking about just regular prisms anymore, or rectangular prisms or square prisms anymore. These could be a little bit more complicated shapes. So when we're talking about polyhedron, usually we've got to think a little bit more about how this works. Now, for most cases, when we're talking about prisms, what we're going to do here is we're going to find the area of the base and simply multiply by the height. Now, if it's a rectangular or square prism, that's easy. That's just going to be length times width, and then we multiply by the height. And that's where we get that idea that volume is length times width times height. But if it's a, a more complex um, polygon, then we've got to find that area and multiply by the height. So we substitute the area formula for the base uh, of the prism in at the area of the base here. So then the height of the prism is just defined as the distance between the two bases here, okay? And remember that with a prism, you're going to have two bases and they're going to be the exact same shape, okay? And they're going to be parallel to each other. Now finally, uh, capacity is um, the amount of uh, liquid or dry grids that a container can hold. So, I mean, it's related to volume clearly. And it is effectively the same thing as the volume. But it's measured in different units. Typically, we're going to talk about liters, milliliters, or kiloliters as the base unit for capacity. Uh, whereas, usually with, with volume, you're talking about um, linear units cubed. Okay? Now, the imperial system, we talk about ounces, cups, pints, quarts, gallons, and so on. So, and you, you may have heard those measurements used before here. And then we got a, a little bit of a conversion here. Uh, one centimeter cubed. Okay, volume measure, there's your capacity, one milliliter, and then a thousand centimeters cubed will be one liter. Now, let's just take a look at some examples where we're calculating volume. Okay, so in this question here, we're looking at a triangular prism. So the base is a triangle, which means that the top and the bottom here are both going to be triangles. And so the formula for the area of the base will be length times width divided by two. And the height will be the distance between the triangles. So in this particular case here, the height of the, the prism here is going to be 4. And now the diagram here is, is nicely done for us because what it does is it shows us this triangle here and it gives us the altitude. So here's the base. When we slide that up, it's going to be 8 centimeters. So for our volume here, we're going to take the area of the base of the triangle, which is going to be the length, the 8, multiplied by the height there, that 5.1, all over 2. And then we're going to multiply by the height of the whole shape here, which will be 4. Okay, and now we pull out our, our uh, calculator here. Let it do the calculation for us. 8 times 5.1 divided by 2, and then we're going to multiply finally by 4. And we get 81.6. And in this case, because the units are given to us, we can write that it's going to be centimeters. And because it's volume, we will write centimeters cubed. That's our answer here. Now, there are a couple other numbers here that were, were given to us. We had this side of the, the prism, and we had this side of the prism here. Those are other important measures, but just not for helping us find the, the volume. Um, you might have used those, for example, to find the altitude of the the triangular base, but for right now it's a matter of just being able to look at that and realize that these numbers, based on what I want to do with this, were unimportant. All right, now for this question, we're looking at a square prism, so the base is going to be a square, okay, and, and that makes the area of the base really quite easy. It's just going to be the side length squared here, and then we just have to multiply by the height or the distance between the, the two bases there. So in this case, the way the, tri the, the, sorry, the square pr prism is written here, this is the base, and over here, this is the base, and then the distance between them is 9. That's the one measure here that's, that's different than the rest of them. So my volume here is going to be the area of the base, which will be 5 times 5, 
And then we're going to multiply by the, the length here, or the height of the prism, which in this case is going to be 9. And so we go to our calculator here. We've got 5 times 5, and we'll multiply by 9. And we're going to get 225. And then again, in this case, we do know the units, centimeters, and because it's volume, centimeters cubed. Okay, in this question right here, we're looking at a rectangular prism, which is going to be really no more difficult than the square prism. So in this case here, we've got, um, and actually with this particular case here, you, you could even determine which is the base yourself kind of at random. It doesn't really matter. You could consider any one of these uh, faces here to be the base and then the, uh, the one on the other side to be the other base here. So in this case right here, it's really easy to find the volume of the rectangular prism because it really does amount to being length times width times height. So you might say that's going to be 11 times 6 times that depth there, 3. So pull out the calculator. 11 times 6 times 3. You get 198. And this time the units are kilometers, so it'll be kilometers cubed. Yeah, the rectangular prism, the square prism, these are really the easiest ones to work with because the, the area of the base is so easy to, to calculate and you're already quite familiar with it. All right, now let's take a quick look at the volume of a cylinder. Okay, now a cylinder has got a circle. Uh, it's a base, that's uh, that is the base. Sorry, I, I said it and then I, I read that and I read it wrong <laughs> to begin with here. There are two circular bases here. Okay, and so we're going to multiply the area of the base by the height of the, the cylinder, which is the distance between the two bases here. So in this particular case here, it's going to be pi. And then the radius here, in our case, is 6 yards. So it'll be 6 squared. And then multiplied by the height of the prism, which will be just multiplying by another 6 here. So this is going to end up being pi multiplied by 6 squared times 6, which is really just 6 cubed. And... Ultimately, I get uh, approximately 678. Let's go to the nearest tenth here, point six yards cubed. Okay, so in this last one that we're going to do, it's going to be the regular, uh, so the volume of a regular polygonal pr uh, prism. In this particular case here, it, it's going to be a hexagon, but it could be anything, because we've already looked at how you find the area of these different polygonal basis, okay? So we're going to take the area of the triangle that we create, we're going to multiply that by the number of sides that we've got, and that'll give us the area of the full base there, and then we're going to multiply by the height. So in this particular case here, okay, this is a, a hexagon, so I'm going to multiply by 6 ultimately for the, the number of different sides that we've got here, but our each triangle here in the uh, base is going to have, first of all, a side length of 6. Okay, e Every one of the side uh, lengths is going to be the same, top and the bottom. The altitude is going to be 5.2, so it'll be 6 multiplied by 5.2. I okay. actually wanted to clean that up just a little bit, but that's okay. Divided by 2, because it's a triangle, multiplied by 6, and now we're going to multiply by the, the depth. Pull out the calculator, and so that will be 6 times 5.2 divided by 2. So that's the area of one of those triangles, times 6 gives us the area of the entire base, and then by multiplying that area by the height, we get 936, and this will be inches cubed because we're talking about volume, and that's how you do it.